People say you can't make money in music, and it's true. It's a highly competitive industry, and there's a massive gap between the haves and the have-nots. But don't you get that twisted, because there's a lot of money being made by a lot of people in the music industry, and I've worked with quite a few music millionaires and built a few successful music companies myself. So in all that, understand that there's one thing that these people who are very successful at making money in music focus on, and that's leverage. And all they do strategically is ask themselves five questions that help them gain massive strategic leverage. So today we're gonna go over those five questions. Let's get it. It's the network. <laughs> So number one, what is their business model? Now, when I say what is their business model, this can pertain to a partner, a company you're getting with, uh, anybody that you're trying to work with or, or build with, they ask what is their business model? So let's take a record label at hand. What is the business model of a major record label? It's not, hey, I wanna take this artist, cultivate this artist, build them out, right? And then turn that into revenue. It's not that by itself. People think that, but when you think about a record label's business model at large, it's, hey, I need to take a high volume of artists, right? And in that high volume of artists, some of them are going to be successful. I'm playing a numbers game. That's why I'm signing so many people. And then as some of them show themselves to be more promising, I will invest in them right, to try to accelerate that. But I wanna be as strict with my resources as possible. So that's a record label, right? They're playing the numbers game just like a venture capitalist investor. With that being said, that has to alter how you think. The best artists, right, who understand that, who say, what is their business model? When I've seen them work and, and have success with labels, they understood that that's their position, right? And that means when I get signed, right? That I am not just sitting and waiting for them to give me something, right? I know that I'm signed, but I still have to create a spark to get their attention, to make somebody turn around where then they can say, yo, we need to accelerate this, whatever this is going on, because they're just playing a numbers game. They, they play, they're playing the safety game. They don't want to invest in something, even though they signed you. I know it sounds crazy. They don't want to invest in something that isn't going to be successful. And they're always trying to lower their risk. That's their business model. Think through that. This same thing applies to every single situation and you have to always be able to analyze it. And number one is so important, I'm gonna give context with a few more examples, music and non-music. Another music example is, got a friend, manages an artist from ground up, they built and they were able to get a, a great deal. 300K for seven or eight months, just seven or eight months and the people that they did a deal with, they don't own anything, don't own the masters, none of that stuff. They only get money from the music that's made within that deal, they aren't taking any of the prior music right they're only getting money from the music that, that that is being made in that deal and they're only getting it from streaming that's where the money's coming from now great deal amazing deal congratulations however now when you have to continue to do business with these people you have to understand your position so here's a small example of the friend not understanding that for a second but of course he analyzed it and realized what, what it really is because the people were actually straightforward with them which is which is rare check this out he wanted to build for his artist in countries that were not the key countries that the people he were doing he was doing deals with, right? Which was the US. They wanted to focus on the US. His whole idea was, hey, if I go target some of these other international countries, which working with us, he found that they were getting really, really great results. Right? If I target these people, I can build audiences for cheap. And with those cheap audiences, we can monetize through these live shows and all these other things, right? That's kind of the idea behind it. The people that were listening to him, right? The people who he did the deal with, they're like, that's great, right? You should do that. But you're not gonna do that with the money that we're investing. Why? Because our investment doesn't pertain to what you can make off of live shows or any of those strategies. We don't care about any of that stuff because we don't make money off of that, right? So you can't take the money that we're investing in you and apply it towards that. Great strategy, put your own money up, Put your uh, tell the artist to put his money up. But y'all, we only care about these streaming things and our strategy is built particularly around America because the money in America is higher than other streaming platforms, right? So when you understand that, right, it's all about your positioning. What's the business model of the people you're dealing with? Some deals 
can be can have a slightly different business model than their general business model because in any other situation they would have loved to have masters and things like that but it was negotiated so what's the business model of this particular agreement what so and what do they care about because of it you always have to keep that in mind because that is your leverage understand when you know your position and, and what benefits them and where their incentives lie you can leverage that situation far better for yourself right and here's another example outside of music before we move on to number two i know somebody who works at amazon they they're pretty high up make a lot of money into the six figures at amazon they have these content creators under them right and they've been merging with amazon because it started with the company outside of amazon and in this situation Amazon is a operationally efficient, logistic focused company. That's what they care about more than anything else. Not all that creativity and all these cool ideas. And the content creators are like, yo man, y'all aren't taking advantage of all these cool ideas and I could keep giving you all this cool creative stuff and these graphic designs, but the company isn't built off of that. That's not where their strength and their focus lies. Because of that, it's like, yo, we're just trying to find the best creative. We take that creative and we're gonna optimize the hell out of that creative to maximize the results. And that is our primary, primary focus. We want our click throughs, we want our sales. That's the focus. Those people as employees, right? See, it, it applies any situation as an entrepreneur, even as an employee. As employees, they have to understand that it's not about your creativity here. Not, not to the max. Now, if you wanted to be about your creativity, go into a, a, um, a business, right? Where it's maybe a content media company or something like that. But here, you're not on the side of leverage. And that means you're not going to make as big of an impact on that company, right? And because, since you're not going to make as big as an impact as quickly, since that's not their core competency, then you have only but so far that you can go with the skill set that you're trying to lean on, right? You have to think more about what their incentives are. Keep, keep that in mind, right? So it applies every single situation in every company, every person you're doing business with. Know where the incentives lies because you can use that as leverage for yourself. And you'll see as we get to number two through five, I had to spend a lot of time on that one for a reason because it provides the context. When we get to levels two through five, you'll really see how this plugs in. So number two, what is my long-term strategy? Long-term strategies are a key to leverage because there's a lot of hustlers that focus on the short term and how can I do now? How can I do now? How can I flip this moment to the best thing possible for this particular moment? But once you open things up, right, and have a long term strategy, it actually creates far more opportunities for leverage. So here's an example. People think about record deals and they have one particular idea of it, right? What's a good deal? What's a bad deal? But the truth is there's nuances because everybody has their own life. There are some people, let's say if your strategy is more so just to get famous to a certain amount, right? And you use your, your fame to flip into other things and music is your, your entry point. But you know, you can flip that into acting because you have these other skill sets or, or you know how to flip that into um, just other types of business and things of that nature. You might be looking at music completely different, right? Somebody might want to be a career artist and all they want to do is create music and, and that's the focus and I'm, I'm an artist artist, but there's some people who might say, hey, my long-term strategy is not really music. I want to use music as a launch pad. So the deal they take may not be as good, right, as it would be for somebody who's just going to be relying on music, you know, to infinity. So that person might take a step back strategically in what might seem like a, a lesser financial situation, but they know they're building this situation as leverage with this deal because everything you basically are bringing in investors and people helping you create a platform and then make money elsewhere, which so many artists have done and done successfully. However, a lot of artists haven't gone into it, right? Because a lot of artists just had by bad deals and then had to figure out how do I make something shake? But there's artists who are now more and more smartly understanding that they can use that as that launch pad and keep going. You think about somebody like Will Smith, how you flip that uh, being a, a rapper into an, a, 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 an actor and then everything he's done as an actor and, and, and business person in general. The beauty of this, when we go back to the business model situation, when you understand, right? When you have a strategy and you understand the business model that you're working within or the, whether you're doing a partnership or a sponsor deal, the things that they care about and the things that you care about, 
it allows you to one, manage your expectations of what you're going to get because you know what the deal is, right? If I'm a, a kid who's highly recruited into a college, you should know when you get to the college, you're a nobody again until they see enough spark into you and you work your way up to a starting position, right? It's the same thing with a deal, with a deal in, in music or, or things like that. So if you manage those expectations, you'll know how to navigate better and two, right? You'll be able to, with your strategic long-term vision, have leverage in places that doesn't exist for other people because you have a path that isn't what other people are doing, right? You, you have a strategy that's completely different. So make sure you lay out your strategy and have your own business model in mind. Don't always just focus on the immediate, how can I make the most out of this particular situation at this time right here? There are stepping stones that you can put together that has a far greater result. And that's how you build a lot of leverage, right? Whether it's an intern who's building a relationship and I work super hard, right? And, and build a relationship with these people. And then I take their knowledge that they've given me and the relationships that they now give me access to because of the trust I've built with them. And I build that into a co company, which so many music millionaires have done, whether it's Scooter Braun. And there's, there's so many I've seen personally or worked with personally who have used the internship or just hard work route. But there's so many ways to build leverage. Understand that your strategy long term is going to open up the world to you to build leverage in ways that other people can't because they're focused on short term, greedy and needy situations. Number three, cash flow. They ask, where is my cash flow? Not where is my money? Where is my cash flow? And this actually goes back to short term versus long term because. You can take a lump sum or you can take cash flow. The beauty is when you have a consistent cash flow and they focus on building these small cash flows that they might be able to enlarge, whether that's from managing somebody and taking a small cut or if I'm an artist and I can just figure out how to get $1,000 a month over here with my fans and then make another $500 a month from my Spotify just starting out. All of that gives you leverage, right? I can get a lump sum of 10,000 or a hundred thousand dollars. But the problem that that creates when you just focus on lump sums is you're now still trying to figure out where's your next lump sum coming, right? Because the flow has stopped. But when you figure out ways to build consistent cash flow, even if they're small, they give you leverage and it allows you to make far better decisions and it allows you to be far more disciplined to your strategy, right? Because you're not acting out of desperation. So what I've seen, right, and even what I've done, right, built small strategic cash flows that are ongoing. You're at $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, which is a pretty decent way to live, $3,000 a month. You, you get to this, right? But you can start at 1K, 500, whatever that number is. You build these cash flows, and when you know that you're just going to have more coming in, Trust me, the level of freedom that it gives you when it comes to making decisions, how you get to make deals with people and the way you're thinking, completely different. Night and day, then, hey, I just got $30,000 in the bank, which I've, I've been in that situation, $30,000 in the bank, right? But where's my next money coming out of? Because I don't have any flow, right? I have no idea. So I have to Hustle, hustle, hustle. Oh, which one is, is this situation going to work out? Is this situation going to work out? It's not the same. Focus on cash flow. It will give you so much leverage, even if that number is not as high as a lump sum. Keep that in mind. It builds strategic leverage and the cash flow is what gives you the ultimate freedom. That's all I'll say for that. We can go deeper on that in another video. Now, number four, they build systems. Right. It's all about building systems versus being Superman or Superwoman. And when I talk about building systems, you're leveraging people and technology all right, and information to build these systems, because the whole game is not to be doing the same thing over and over again. The whole game is to build a system that's going to allow you to have this exact same output. Right. Where, you know, I can do this and that will happen. And then once you get that set, you can go focus on building something else, right? And then you can go focus on building something else. And you're building all these systems that helps give you this leverage because you're building assets. That's what a system is. A system is an asset, whether you know, hey, I own this small playlist, 
right? And I know that from this playlist, from the system I built, maybe the one person I've hired to run it and, and get the deals when people reach out to it and the money, I know that I'm going to get this amount of money from my, my playlist, right? And that also gives me cash flow flow but i've set that system up so now i could be working on the next type of cash flow or i could be working on a different part of the business that is my strength but i've built systems in the other places of the business right systems are your assets and it's what allows you to have freedom i'll tell you this most of the music millionaires and even the just millionaires that i know in general they've built smaller businesses that gave them freedom to focus on the bigger businesses that they've built. Most of them have gone that route. It's not this huge, oh, I'm out of here. Here's this big lucky lotto day. It's they built cash flows, right? And they built systems that allow those cash flows to continue without them having to do anything. And then they focus their other efforts elsewhere. That applies for any kind of artist, right? It applies for a general music professional who wants to be an entrepreneur because artists have to be entrepreneurs these days. And you have to be able to figure out how can you build your, your system out, right? Somebody like Russ is somebody who's done that very well. He has a very tight system. Yes, he does operate multiple parts of his system when it comes to the core music production, but then there's other parts of his system in terms of monetization, merch, and how these other things get managed. So you might have your, your core strength that you want to stay in and you have to be there, but you still have to figure out how to bring in people that are going to help you build systems I, and, and identifying that. We'll do a whole video on team and building with the right people. If you want to, you know, if anybody wants to hear that, make sure y'all put in the comment section below to let me know. Um, but it's about identifying those right people and understanding what those right systems are to build in the first place and even the order to, of which to build the systems. Systems are the superpower of music millionaires. And please take note, I want you to really not miss that fact that I said in terms of so many of these people, right? They build businesses that get first give them freedom enough to focus on bigger businesses, all right? Freedom usually is coming from that cash flow. Even if they exit and they get one massive lump sum, they've now established something that can help them um, focus on building something more or the freedom of the whatever they want to focus on and, and guarantee they're not going to sell for a lump sum if you haven't built with systems because nobody's buying some messy businesses that that doesn't work without you that just is what it is number five where do i focus my resources right now focus of resources is massive when it comes to building leverage and i'll tell you why imagine that there's three different opponents all right and they're all in the same industry, but there's different parts of a system that they can focus on or, or different parts of the industry where they're similar, but they're focused on different ways of building their business. For one instance, somebody might be using their YouTube channel or like social media really heavy. Somebody else might be using ads and, and that system really heavy to get uh, to, to get things out. And they might be focused heavily on maybe the operations and establishing back-end industry relationships. Then you have this other person that chooses a third route and they try to do social media and they try to be the super, super industry people at the same time, all right, with no operations really strong. What happens in those situations is person number one, they win that one thing that they were focused on, the social media and all that stuff, and they establish a dominance there. Person number two wins this music industry situation. They really establish those, uh, that dominance, and they have all those relationships, and they're, they're, they're schmoozers, all right? And that person who's trying to focus on both of these things, all right, and some other third route, they don't win anything. They lose out in these two areas, and they have nothing established that's different at all. So they end up getting wiped out as these people become more and more dominant, and then as these people become more and more dominant, that person says, hey, let me take my social media presence and flip that into the industry somehow. And that person from the industry says, hey, let me take my, my industry dominance and use those relationships to create a presence on social media, right? They've done it in order versus trying to do things at the same time because focus of resources is a very real thing, right? If I'm spending 100% of my time over here, Right. And I'm and I'm practicing and we're playing basketball or something like that. And you're playing all these other sports and, and all this other stuff. But we have the same equal amount of talent. I'm going to beat you out because I'm spending all my time here and you're splitting it up. It's just going to happen. So focusing resources and knowing when 
to, to actually move past, to refocus your resources is a massive amount of things because I'll have only but so much time. I might have only but so many people on my team and I have to allocate their time, let alone the, the amount of money that I have right now, right? All of these resources need to be focused and they need to get a specific output. Music millionaires are, they're hellacious about where they focus their resources and making sure they get a specific output before right they're able to move on past something else and what do you do with those focus resources you're usually going to establish a system so those are the five things that you have to focus on when it comes to building strategic leverage those are the five most common ways that i see music millionaires build strategic leverage now i know this isn't the type of video that people typically hear or see when it comes to music and but i really want to focus on helping artists become more of entrepreneurs and music professionals, understanding more of the entrepreneur side, if that's something that people are interested in. So make sure you not only like this video, but share it, share it with other people. If you think this is something valuable that other people wanna see. And of course, you know, make comments, let me know. I'll do about three or four um, of these type of videos, see how it is, if it's something that people actually wanna see or not, and we'll continue on from there. So that's it for this video today. If you like this video, go ahead and like button. If you like it, you might as well share it, share the video. And of course, if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.